for all you professional landlords, let's talk about a true day one remortgage product. You purchase the property, cash, bridging finance, however you've done so, and let's just assume that you want to remortgage it straight away. You don't have to wait for land registry. You don't have to show a schedule of works. You don't have to go through the pain of not knowing what, whether the underwriter is going to take it. It's a buy to let product. It could be on the SPV. It could be in your own personal names. I've, it's a new lender, a new total, totally different way of working on a product. I'm going to go through rates, criteria, everything about the type of deal. Uh, look into a little bit more about six months rule mortgages. So I'll catch you on the video. I hope you're well. Right, I've got some really good news. Um, I'm delighted to say that Niche Advice has been selected out of probably, there's only probably about 15 brokers in the whole of the country. And we're a small business, so it's, uh, I'm delighted that we've been recognized and selected um, um, for this. But um, uh, as a new lender that's launched, uh, and this lender has got some fantastic innovative products uh, on the buy to let front and I'm going to talk to you about one of them just now which is really a true day one remortgage for buy to let landlords so if you're buying a property um, cash or auction you can now literally put in the application in the next day which means if you are taking bridging finance or you know you need to get out of it quickly this is an ideal type of product now it is a true day one remortgage product. Now I have got other lenders that will do day one remortgage, however there's always caveats to it. Um, does it need to be, it needs to be like for like for example, you need to take out a bridging finance for example, you need to do the works for example, you need to evidence the works. Now reality is if you're purchasing a property by bridging finance let's just say, it's going to take you a couple of months to do the works. Okay, You don't really want to be sitting on that uh, you know, sitting on that bridging finance and not knowing where you're going to be coming and going. So this gets does away with that because essentially what happens is you put the remortgage in, no, sorry, you do the purchase and your solicitor will then basically confirm to the lender that everything's happened via TR1 form. Now, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but let's talk about the history, uh, first of all, um, of you know, why this six months rules been put in place? Why have the lenders have got this silly rules? You know, often I get landlords saying, well, why, why have they put that rule in place? Well, I've been in the industry long enough to have seen why this rule was put in place. And I've wrote an article on our website um, and you can go and see it on www.nicheadvice.co.uk. I will leave a link below this video. But, but essentially, it will explain uh, everything, really, what we're talking about, the rates and the, and the fees and everything. But um, essentially, the lenders put in this rule because of dodgy behavior before the last crash. Um, there was a lot of new builds happening back in the day, and there were um, a lot of uh, conveyances, surveyors, and lenders um, uh, essentially working together, or I don't know whether they were working together, but there was a lot of activity being done whereby people were buying the property and the next day they would remortgage it for a higher value. Okay, so they'll buy the property, the value will go around, we we'll remortgage it higher because they said they got such a good deal, and then they will just pull it out. So essentially, 100% mortgages were being done, and they were being done, you know, hugely. Some of the biggest lenders, lenders like Mortgage Express, I think they took a lot of this type of business. So there was a lot of that type of, and guess what, they're no longer around. Um, so there was a lot of activity and there was a lot of developments, um, you know, new buildish developments um, that were, you know, right with this stuff. You know, it was happening all the time. I know some specialist brokers that dealt with the new build sector and that's all they were writing. So because of that, because the lenders took a hit, because the lenders were essentially being swindled, uh, let's be honest, because they thought they were lending on things that were worth more than what they were. Because of that, a lot of the lenders, and, and I would say majority of the lenders, put a rule in place, um, certainly the high street ones, to say, look, you cannot remortgage within six months, okay? Just to keep away from that back-to-back -back transaction okay so that's a little bit of history around that and what's happened over the years is um, the high street lenders have stuck by that 
by you know there are a few high street lenders on the residential front they don't have this six months rule so there are some lenders um, that don't have a six month rule if you're buying a residential but what you found was a lot of the lenders especially on the buy to let sector they put this six months rule in place now as things have moved along over the years um, specialist lenders have thought right okay um, there's there's an opportunity here where we can lend Obviously, we've got our approved surveyors going out there. Obviously, they're going to value the property up anyway. But you know, we, I think I think we're going to be a little bit more comfortable, um, and that's why I suppose uh, that's why you've seen a lot of bridging finance uh, being done because in the olden days there wasn't that much bridging. There wasn't bridging really, um, so you saw the emergence of bridging because people were buying properties faster and turning it around, buying them under market value, putting using the equity in the in the deal sometimes, not put as much deposit down. So a lot of that happened. Um, so these specialist lenders have started playing around with this six months rule. Now, the, it started off with uh, lenders saying, look, if as long as you can prove, uh, first of all, a lot of the lenders, the first rule was, look, if you're gonna do it for a like for like, so say you bought the property for, I don't know, 200,000 pounds, and you're now gonna remortgage it two months later, and you, the value is still 200,000 pounds, will allow you to do it. So no capital raising element within six months. So there's a bunch of lenders that will do that and there are out there. So there are lenders that will allow you to remortgage. However, they still wanted, uh, a lot of them still wanted the, um, the legal stuff to be over. So you should be showing on the land registry. Okay, so that's one batch of lenders. Then there was another batch of lenders that came into the market. So right, okay, we're gonna move, move this along a little bit. We'll allow you to capital raise so you bought the property for 200,000, but now it's worth, I don't know, 280. Uh, tell us what you've done to it. Because they understood that, you know, a lot of people that are buying property are flipping them, they're doing works to them. To them. So they've said, look, we'll pay you over whatever you can show us receipts for, evidence of work. So what you had to do essentially is take a load of photographs, take your receipts, take your building, schedule of works, everything, and then you submit that with your remortgage application to the lender to say, look, Yes, I bought it for 200. I've spent 40k on there, so can I value it at 240? They still will not do value it on open market, they'll value it at what you've spent on it. So, again, there's a load of lenders that will do that. Then we had a couple of lenders come into the market and said, Right, we'll allow you to capital raise and we'll allow you to do it up to our market value um, uh, as long as obviously the legal work is done. Um, and that's that's what they that's what they said that's what they did um, and so and now you've got a one or two other lenders that have come into the market that say look as long as we'll allow you to remortgage within six months whether it's cash whether it's bridging finance however you've bought it as long as you can show us how you purchased it in terms of you know for money laundering purposes you can show us where the funds came from originally for the purchase we will allow you to capital raise okay um, as long as you know generally what it was is as long as you can we can see the work now we've got a lender this new lender a lender's name's uh, quantum mortgages who've just come off our, come on our panel uh, they basically just launched and they're saying look we don't want to see the evidence of work we're not gonna we're not gonna mess around as long as your solicitor says they've purchased it for this much they've submitted a TO one form so the solicitor can confirm that they've been acting on your behalf and so forth as long as their value stacks it up, as long as the value goes around there and says, yeah, it's worth it, um, that's it. You don't have to go through the pain of doing all of that. Because unfortunately, what happens is, if you are going to start putting this in the hands of an underwriter, you know, underwriters can be tricky sometimes. You know, they can come back and say, well, we don't believe you, or we don't think this is going to cost this, and we're not sure about this, and subject to their value as common, and all sorts of things like that, where this lender have got a very, very clear-cut policy. Right, so let's look at the, uh, the product specifically. And like I said, I have uh, done an article on this, and the product rates and the fees and the type of products there are, they're actually on that article, so I will leave a link below. Let's get to the article itself. So, no six months ownership rule. All right, buy to let remorgues the next day of purchase. I've explained the various. Let's go into the uh, some of the points. Okay, so one applicant must own a buy to let 
for a year. So that's important, okay? So it's not for the novices, okay? You need to have at least owned one buy to let for a year. Day one remortgage, property registration just to need to be confirmed on the land, does not need to be confirmed on the land registry. And that's a big point. A lot of those six months rule renders will say that, you know, that, that it needs to be on the land registry. Well, land registry is about, I'm being told, about two and a half months behind. So two and a half months, if you're sitting on bridging finance, you know, that's two and a half months worth of fees that you have to pay. And then on the day that it's showing on the land registry, you can put the application in. So, you know, you're a couple of months behind. Up to 80% loan to value remortgage on a buy to let. Now, I'm not a big fan of 80% buy to lets, I have to say. Okay. I'm not a big fan of gearing up so much on buy to lets. Uh, people often choose to do so, it's their own strategy. But I feel a lot more comfortable than 75% loan to value. No need to provide evidence of work, which is fantastic. Remortgage to buy an onward investment property without, ah, without the need of identifying the onward purchase. Real big one on this, guys. What's happened with a lot of the lenders is, which is a bit silly. Say you own a property, say um, you've owned it for 10 years. You now want to remortgage to buy a property, maybe in an auction, maybe to buy it in five months time. Maybe you don't, you're not, you know, you haven't found the property straight away. A lot of the lenders are saying, look, we want to see the onward purchase. You need evidence of the onward purchase before we release this money. Well, with this lender, you know, you could, in theory, remortgage and put the money in your pocket and wait for nine months. So that's very important. So it gives you flexibility. Obviously, they've understood what landlords are doing, what the need is in the market. Innovation, guys, well done. Um, single unit standard buy to lets, okay? Multi units up to six units, HMOs to six bedrooms with shared amenities, 65% loan to value, right? So a little bit more around the criteria around the HMOs and multi nets. Personal name or special purpose vehicle. So it could be in your personal name, held in personal name or limited company. Background portfolio stress test of 100% coverage. So there is some stress test on that uh, behind the scenes on the portfolios. We'll talk about that once you've actually, we've had a look at your portfolio and, and run through this. So then I've actually gone through the, the products, what it looks like with 35% equity in there, 25% equity and 20%. So basically 80%, 75% and 65% deals. Uh, we've run through what the rates are. We run through all of the subsequent rates, minimum equity, lenders fees, booking fees, all of the costs in there. And they've also got some no early repayment charge products. Now this guys, essentially is a cheap bridge. Okay, so there's some really cool stuff you can do with no early repayment charge. So you're not stuck there. So how are they making their money? Well, they're making their money on this. So what, they're care, what they care about is that. But if you take into account an average bridging finance uh, fee is about 2%, okay? And obviously you've got all the uncertainty with the bridging finance and all sorts. So as long as the property is mortgageable, as long as it fits its stress test, then essentially you're using a cheap bridge but paying those type of rates, okay? So it's, it's useful, it's, it, again, these are the reasons why you would come to a specialist mortgage broker, you'd come to a buy to let mortgage broker, because we have access like to such products, okay? That's not in the market. In fact, I think, I believe, there's between only 15 to 20 brokerages in the country. Now bear in mind, I think there's about 10,000 brokers that have got access to this product. So this is where niche come into it. This is what niche advice does and, and lenders recognizing us for what we do and have actually come back and given us this product. And we've been in dialogue with this lender for, you know, for a while now um, and, and, and having a look at their product range and, and what they're gonna come back with. And they've got lots of other things. And what I'll do is I'll try to do an interview with um, the sales and marketing manager, or sorry, sales and marketing director of the lender if I can to talk about uh, some of the other things. This is just one product, one aspect of what they can do. Um, 
it's not, you know, it's not high street, it's specialist, it's, it's targeted at landlords to understand this stuff. You know, this is certainly not, I mean, the worst type of client I get is when they try to compare this to a, I don't know, a Santander deal. I mean, going like, you know, but Santander's doing that at 2%. No, 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 this is positioned at a completely different type of a client. Um, you know, I wouldn't dream of sort of positioning this to a novice uh, uh, buy to let investor. This is for professional investors who understand what they can do with the money, who understand the consequences of this day one remortgage, who understand that basically what they can do to access the cash, how they can use their funds to renovate, purchase, refinance, maybe move on to another property. So I hope you found this useful. Check out my article. Guys, this website has got so many. If you go to blogs here, and basically, I've got so many different um, uh, articles. I'm talking about uh, time to fix with uh, Mortgage Express, all those Mortgage Express clients that are uh, on tracker rates and BM Solution clients on tracker rates. Maybe it's a good time to actually fix in on a, on a buy to let. But that's a different uh, um, you know, blog or video. Uh, but uh, hopefully you found this useful. If you are interested in this type of product, do get in touch with me uh, by just clicking the contact us there and I'll catch you on the next one. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.